Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. Today, I will continue to cover the proof of Shepard's Lemma, which I didn't quite finish in part one of my lecture video. So, if you want to master this subject, please follow, follow me. Okay, in part one of my lecture video, I mentioned that proving Shepard's Lemma would be equivalent to showing that the two terms on the top of the slide add up to zero. In order to do that, we need to use the first order conditions of the typical cost minimization problem in consumer theory as follows. The first FOC is that P1 equals lambda times du dx h1. The second FOC is that P2 equals lambda times du dx h2. The last one is just a constraint of the problem. That is, u of x h1 and x h2 equals a small u. Here lambda denotes lag range multiplier, and x h1 and x h2 represent Hicksian demands, as these are the very conditions that should hold at the interior optimum. Now, let's plug the expressions on the right-hand side of the first two FOCs into P1 and P2 on the top of the slide. Then we have lambda times, derivative of u with respect to Hicksian demand for good one, times derivative of Hicksian demand for good one with respect to P1, plus lambda times, derivative of u with respect to Hicksian demand for good two, times derivative of Hicksian demand for good 2 with respect to P1. Now, if you factor out lambda, the expression would become the following. Here, if the expression in the bracket is 0, then we know that the whole thing would also be 0, as lambda times 0 is 0. Now, what do we have left? Well, we still haven't used the very last FOC, have we? The very last FOC was simply the constraint of the minimization problem for the purpose of holding utility at a fixed level. Let's differentiate this equation with respect to P1. Then we have derivative of u with respect to Hicksian demand for good 1 times derivative of Hicksian demand for good 1 with respect to P1 plus derivative of u with respect to Hicksian demand for good 2 times derivative of Hicksian demand for good 2 with respect to P1 equals 0. Hmm, to my eyes, this whole thing looks familiar. Doesn't it look familiar to your eyes as well? Well, it should be as it is the same expression we have derived previously, using the first two FOCs. That is, it looks exactly the same as the expression inside the bracket, after factoring out lambda. What does this tell us? This tells us that the expression inside the bracket is simply zero, and lambda times zero is zero. And that means, at the interior optimum, the equation on the top of the slide always holds. Therefore, we can conclude that the last two terms appearing in this equation add up to zero. So, the derivative of the expenditure function with respect to P1 is simply the Hicksian demand function for good 1, which is what Shepard's lemma states. Shepard's lemma can indeed be extended to the multi-goods case. If you differentiate the expenditure function with respect to the price of any good I, you get the Hicksian demand function for that particular good. Here, the capital P represents the vector of goods prices. Now, we have reached an end of our journey. The proof was not so difficult, was it? In fact, Shepard's lemma is considered a corollary of something more general called the envelope theorem. The goddess of econ shall cover envelope theorem in due course as well. So, do visit again if you want to learn more. Also, do not forget to like and subscribe before you go. May God bless you all.